I was approached by the show Building Off the Grid about building a off the grid home out of our, our compressed earth blocks. And we really jumped at the chance. And the house that you're about to see is the result of, of us jumping in a month later and using our machines to make 9,500 blocks out of, out of the soil right here on site and laying them into this it would become a, a thousand square foot uh, off the grid home. So here's our earth block home. It's a thousand square feet, two bedrooms, one bath. The external walls are completely made out of compressed earth blocks. There's a few internal walls that we, we use this recycling wood for, really closet walls. We got an earthen floor here, which we're really excited about. This is just earth that we wet and troweled on, just like concrete. Uh, but this earth came from under the ground. In fact, when we excavated for our foundation, we took that excess dirt and we made, a, we made our floor out of it. And once that dried, we put a hot linseed oil coating on top and it, that seals it and, and protects it. And it's, it's as hard as concrete. People swear by the benefits of having earth under your bare feet, you know, as a health benefit. So this is recycled shiplap, probably 100 year old wood that we reclaimed and, and used as our walls. This is a clay, this product is from a company called American Clay, but this is, you can get any color of the rainbow. This is just a off-white clay that you just trowel on. So again, just a natural building material. This house is built on a rubble, it's called a rubble trench foundation. And the Romans, invented this technology 2,000 years ago, and all those beautiful structures in Rome that, they, that are still standing, they were built on a rubble trench foundation, which is another, it's kind of gone the way of compressed earth blocks. It, it makes so all the sense in the world, and yet for some reason we moved away from it, you know, here, here in the U.S. particularly. But all you do is, is dig the, the trench, and then you, you throw gravel back in and compact it, and that's what we laid these blocks directly on. And so it's, it's cheap, it's fast, it's easy, it's eco-friendly, and it's very effective because it, it doubles as a French drain. So any water that would get up next to the house, it's just gonna dissipate down through the gravel and go go to the side, you can drain it out. But the, the dirt that we excavated, then we used some of it to, to make blocks and we used some of it for the floor. So it's, it's a really good idea all around. So my wife and I really, mostly my wife designed, designed this uh, layout. She has a real good eye for this. But this is, you know, this is kind of the living area on in, on into the kitchen area, all reclaimed, almost all reclaimed materials except for the, the countertops. Some of the stuff we literally took out of the trash, like the wood for this hood uh, was in a dumpster and took that out and built this hood out of it. We didn't really have this plan for this wall, but as we got about halfway up, we thought, what if we kind of just built some shelves into into the side of the wall? And so, you know, you just you just stack the blocks and put a, put a header and then continue um, building above that. This this is live oak wood from that a, a tree had fallen here on our property, and we sliced, got it sliced up into these planks that you'll see all around the house. This is probably over a hundred year old live oak, and it, this stuff is extremely strong. So this this is an earth coating. This is again the earth that came up on site here. We just mixed it with water and a little bit of, not, not concrete, but just this like sand that you would use to make concrete and just troweled that on. We love the way that turned out. This house in general, you just, you can feel that you're in a natural setting. Of course, reclaimed windows. These are cast iron windows that came off of a hospital um, 20 years ago. And they kind of sat in my uncle's pasture until until this last year and he let us he let us have them and we, we cleaned them up, painted them and put some new glass in them. And, and that's, those are the windows we have on the house now. Um, this is another fun, fun thing you can do with, with compressed earth blocks, which is an arch. We, we decided to throw an arch here and you can kind of do these buttresses that, that add structural support, um, but also, you know, have a really nice, cool, cool look to them. You can either leave the blocks just bare, like, you know, kind of leave that brick look, or you can put this, an earthen coating, or you can put a, one of these American clay coatings on. This is the second bedroom, so really the the kids' bedroom. You can really feel in here that it's it, it's nice and cool. Like today, it was it was freezing overnight, and it's still 68 degrees in here. No heater or anything. This the ceiling boards actually are kind of interesting. That those are about 130 years old. They had square nails in them when we when we got them, but they came off the river walk here in San Antonio. They were renovating a building, and they took down the drop ceiling. And five feet above that were these boards that had probably been there for over 100 years. Yeah, really made use of. Reclaim materials, natural materials, obviously, with the compressed earth blocks. It cost us $50,000 to make this 1,000 square foot house, so $50 a square foot. That's cheaper than, than conventional building materials, but you have this beautiful building that's gonna last, that's climate controlled. It's a low cost of ownership. We're, we're really excited um, to, to be living here. <laughs>
again, a lot of, a lot of reclaimed materials. This house has a lot of personality. We've got the old clawfoot tub. This is another fun thing we did where we kind of built in these, these compressed earth block shelves, just floating shelves, really just on a whim. I mean, just kind of letting our imagination be our guide, but you know, these, and because they're, they're cement stabilized, they can get water on them all day and they're, they're fine. This is, this is really a, a nice room of the house. We did another arch here, just a, a nice artistic thing. These doors are actually from Amsterdam. We got them from a place here in town called Pickers Paradise and they do a good job uh, reclaiming material from not just here in San Antonio, but even from around the world. Melissa was really good to get a lot of light with these. We got these big windows, we got these big uh, French doors. And so we have a lot of light coming in here. We really like the way this room turned out. Um, we got, again, the reclaimed shiplap is kind of a nice contrast to some of the block. You get these nice, um, this live oak, these, these planks of live oak again, coming through to the other side are, are kind of a nice accent. And then of course, the pictures of our pet cows, our, our pet longhorns uh, on the wall are kind of tie out the, the whole motif. This is just the closet, but I mean, this is like the kind. Of, this is like all the leftover wood we kind of had, and it's it's just funny to look at. It's just like the a hodgepodge of um, weird old barn wood and and beadboard that really we had left over. So we go, okay, throw it in throw it in the closet. All these lights that you see on, all the electricity that's going on right now is uh, completely off of this solar power. So it starts obviously with the, the solar panels on, on the roof. And then really this is all the all the equipment. This is an eight kilowatt system. We've got 16 big panels. And then uh, with that, we've got 16 batteries, which I guess one, one panel feeds each battery and charges those up all day long. And during the day, obviously we have more power than we could possibly use. So really a part of living off the grid is if you're doing something that takes a lot of electricity to, to do that during the day when it's kind of a use or lose situation. So, you know, if you were going to do a, a load of laundry and, you know, run the dryer, you would you would do it when it's sunny and not not in the middle of the night when you're on reserve power. But we do have the battery system that can go. It, it, obviously, it can take us all through the night. If we had to, it would take us for three days if there were no, no sunshine. That's, that's a pretty rare occurrence. So there's 16 batteries then, one for each solar panel, and these are they're about the size of a um, golf cart battery. And so those are those are charging up as we speak. We're we're at 100% battery right now. So actually, we're almost in that that use or lose scenario where we're actually making more electricity than we can possibly use or store at the at the moment. These will carry us through the night, which you know I'll wake up tomorrow and uh, the battery will these will still be at 92%. I mean we're not using air conditioner. We're not using uh, electric heat. That's that's a, just one of the many benefits of this this building material, compressed earth blocks. Is they're so you can't even appropriately call it insulation. It's it's thermal mass. So in the winter, it, it acts as it's almost its own battery radiating heat, and then in the summer, it's kind of it's containing that cold air that really just there's so much of this mass with these blocks, you know, being so dense. And these even these small blocks weigh 18 pounds each, so 170,000 pounds of mass. Melissa pegged this spot as a place to eventually have a house just because of the tree. I mean, yeah, the, the tree is really cool. It was also a good place to put our water tank, this 1500 gallon tank that collects the rain. A, a, one good rain can fill up this entire tank from empty, you know, all the way up to the 1500 gallon mark. And then from there, I mean, it's extremely simple. I mean, I, I'd never done anything like this before, but. I, I routed this whole gutter system into here. We had to set it about three feet in the ground just so it would be low enough. But from there, it's just a submersible pump. It's a on-demand pump. So, I mean, it's so simple. You, you just, once you turn the faucet on, it feels the lack of pressure and kicks on and starts pushing water out. And it goes into this sediment filter, so like a paper filter, and then it goes through a carbon filter. And then it goes into this silver thing, which is just a UV light. It's a, so it's a UV sterilizer. It's two just long light bulbs that sterilize the water and make it where you can drink it. And we've, we've tested the water multiple times and there's there's zero bacteria and it. it's completely drinkable. In our society, we, we've moved away from just doing something as simple as collecting rain and running it through a sterilizer and using it, but it's it's too simple to be true. We love doing it this way. You put it all together and you go turn on the faucet and water actually comes out. 
it's kind of <laughs> it's kind of amazing. You guys might like this uh, chair. It's wedged into this live oak tree. I don't know how long it's been there, but someone must have been sitting out here and, I don't know, decided to store the chair in the tree, who knows, 20, 30, 40 years ago, and this is the result. It's wedged in there pretty good. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, sit here, look at the horses, enjoy the land, enjoy the shade, look at the pond. The pond's extremely low right now. We're in kind of a drought, but, um, you know, it's nice to have the water here. There's, we can go fishing. It's good for the kids. The family loves it. Um, so this is our propane tank. It's a 250 gallon propane tank that will basically last us really almost a year. This feeds our propane oven and the stove, stove top. It fuels this tankless water heater, which is extremely energy efficient, obviously, because it's tankless, so it's on demand. And that gives us our, our hot water for, for the bathroom and for the kitchen here. And then the last thing it does is it, uh, it fuels a, a heater, a propane heater, which is extremely energy efficient. And given the, the already efficient nature of these walls, rarely have to use this propane heater to, and it'll heat the entire house, just this one heater that sits in the middle of the house that I can show you. The chimney's kind of impressive. It's another it's another source of heat, obviously, the, uh, the fireplace. And Melissa had this really unique idea to do this indoor-outdoor fireplace that can heat the bedroom, but also be used as an outdoor fireplace. So you can kind of sit here in the evening and enjoy. You can keep it burning all night and then open the doors on the other side into the bedroom and, and throw the heat into there. This chimney was really a big piece of work. This was, it, it was actually 1,500 blocks all, all in for this entire chimney. And it, it was almost just a demonstration of just in your face blocks. I think it's ended up being 14 feet tall, but it's really just almost like an architectural feature that, that really kind of tied the house out, tied it together, the, the two sort of segments and where, where they intersect. And I think it's, I think it's really beautiful. There's a lot of work at the time, but I'm, I'm glad we did it that way. That's kind of our, our off-grid setup in a nutshell, but yeah, completely completely off the grid. We're hundreds of, of meters away from any power grid or, or water system. So really, we, we had no choice but to do it this way. Built out in this nice setting amongst the, these oak trees and everything. Yeah, we, we're really excited about this off-grid home. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give us your thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel if we are not yet. And we hope to see you guys soon again. See you in the next one. Bye.